We have already transformed the way the world operates. And now I believe we have a chance to do it all again. To be the great explorers of the next era. CCS Insights 执行主席 Sean Collins Distinguished guests, please welcome Sean Collins, Executive Chairman of CCS Insight. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the second day of uh, MWC Shanghai and uh, the third keynote. Uh, after a very, very busy day yesterday with some really good high energy. I'm really looking forward to sharing a lot of stuff with you today. Uh, this, this session is going to be split up into three separate areas. The first one is I'm going to sit down and talk uh, for about 15 minutes with the COO and CFO of Qualcomm, uh, Akash Pakawala. Um, and those of you who know Qualcomm will know that they've had a very large part to play in the development both of cellular and now beyond into AI, and we'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Immediately after that, I'm going to be joined by Anna Yip, who's the uh, co-CEO of Singtel Singapore, and also recently been made up to CEO of Business Development. And we'll be talking to Anna about what that means for her, and most importantly, for Singtel. And then later on, in, a, in the last 20 minutes or so, we're going to be uh, awarding and producing the, uh, the Asia Mobile Awards, which is the sister event that we have for MWC Shanghai. Um, it, which is the sister event to the Glomos, which we have in Barcelona. So very exciting, hopefully good energy. Please feel free to uh, clap as loudly as you can often. I think that's a good thing to do. Good. Um, before we start, let's have a quick video from Qualcomm, and then I'll invite Akash to come up and join me. Thank you. Welcome to the edge of possible. Qualcomm is changing the game, driving advances in on-device AI across industries, giving designers new ways to shape the world we live in, and creating tools that can bring our imaginations okay, bring it up. to life. Add a solar panel array. Yep, there we go. Whether you're architecting a new world or reinventing the supply chain, Qualcomm is transforming business to bring intelligent computing everywhere. Looking forward to tomorrow morning. Please confirm 10 a.m. is okay. Translate to Japanese. Helping the auto industry design smarter vehicles. Don't forget, it's date night tonight. Why don't you find a store that sells simple creamery ice cream? Place an order and we'll pick it up on our way home. So you can sit back and enjoy the drive. Qualcomm is engineering human progress. Creating a smarter, more connected world for everyone. Please welcome Akash Pakiwala. Fantastic. Hey. Thank you very much for joining Thank us, you. Akash. Thank you. 
fantastic that we've got somebody from Qualcomm on the stage in Asia. I think that's a wonderful thing. I know you have a big part to play in the Asia market as well. We're excited to be here. Thanks for having me. It's been quite a year for Qualcomm, I think it's it, fair to say. Even a has. company that has, has as much history as Qualcomm has in this, in this industry, it's been quite a year. And I think the transformation of Qualcomm is probably the story, or the diversification perhaps. Do you want to talk a little bit about that to start off with so people can get a bit of sense of that? Yeah, of course. Uh, we're, we're, we're very excited. I think this is an industry that doesn't stand still. It, uh, it changes often, and it changes very significantly. And one of the advantages that Qualcomm has is uh, innovation is basically in our DNA, and we've, we've been able to change as the industry changes. Um, as you know, Snapdragon is the leading computing platform for smartphones. And one of the advantages of being in smartphones is you end up having a very large collection of technologies because you have to do 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth right. You have to do camera, audio, video, uh, CPU, GPU right. And then these days you need very strong AI performance. And, and so what we end up with is just this incredible portfolio of technologies that has relevance to all the other industries that are transforming. And so uh, we formalized our diversification strategy a few years ago. And the, the challenge for us is, how do we take uh, this technology and take it to other kind of other devices? And, and maybe if you look at kind of our track record there, uh, we started off with RF front end, and uh, we were acquired a company that was number four, number five in the industry. We became the leader. Um, automotive, clearly, that's an industry that's massively being disrupted. A lot of a uh, lot of transformation happening within China as well. And and we've been able to establish ourselves as one of the leaders. We are not just uh, in connectivity technologies, we also do computing, uh, digital cockpit chips, and then we also are a key player in the ADAS ecosystem. Uh, so we're pretty happy there's a check for us on automotive. Uh, the next market is the XR market, AR, VR market. And, and you know, we're still kind of trying to figure out how that industry becomes very significant, but I think we're at the front end of it. And, and Qualcomm has probably the best portfolio of, chip, of chips to address that market as well. So. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers. That becomes like a big, uh, big driver for us going forward. Um, the next one is PCs, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a little yeah. more. But uh, the PC is being reborn, and Qualcomm is the company that's driving it. So we're, we're very excited about that. And then I think industrial is going to be a big transformation. There is a lot of uh, applications that needs connectivity, that needs processing, that needs AI. And, uh, and the market is going to transform from microcontrollers to microprocessors that have AI capability. And I think Qualcomm has the shot to become the company of choice in that area as well. Fantastic. So I think it, if you knew Qualcomm in this industry, you probably knew them as a modem chip in the early days. Perhaps that's, that's right. a good place you knew them. And it was a very powerful, very large contributor to that part of the world. But I haven't been in a session here since I arrived on Monday that hasn't been dominated by the conversation of AI. Let's pick off a couple of those for your position in that. We were yeah. talking backstage, and you said that in 2018, Qualcomm had thought about AI and where that might take the company, and more importantly, where the industry was going. The first we saw of that was probably Gen AI. So how does Gen AI become part of your DNA, if you'll forgive the, the acronym? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, Gen AI, obviously, from a technology perspective, is incredibly transformational. It allows you to use uh, AI in a very uh, user-friendly manner, and, and it uh, increases the power of what AI can do very significantly. So massive innovation. And, and we think of AI the same way as we think of computing. A lot of computing happens in the cloud, and then the rest happens in the device. Mm -hmm. We think of AI the same way. There's going to be AI that will happen in the cloud, and of course, you're seeing a lot of that happen. Uh, the next step is to bring AI, gen AI use cases, uh, to the device. And there are some inherent advantages of doing it on the device. You can maintain uh, privacy and security if you do it on the device. Uh, the latency advantage is very significant because you can quickly, quickly do it. The device has a lot of other context that cloud doesn't have about the user. Yes. And so we have the ability to take all the sensors in the device and provide input that adds context to Gen AI use cases. And then finally, cost. When you think about the cost of doing, running a Gen AI use case in the cloud, you're using very expensive cloud resources, whereas you have computing cap capacity that's sitting on the device, and it's dormant. Mm. So why not leverage the computing capacity on device to drive Gen AI use yeah. cases? Yeah. Now, the, the trick to do it on the device is to be able to do it in very low power fashion. 
you cannot, um, everything that we do in phones is centered around power, right? Because uh, the users care very much about having a very long battery life. And if we start sacrificing battery life to drive use cases, it won't work. So one of the things we've come up with is an NPU, it's a neural processing unit, that is specifically tailor-made for AI use cases, and it's gonna drive AI use cases at extremely low power. Right. Sure, you could run those on a CPU, you could run those on a GPU, but there are two, two disadvantages with that. First is those cores have another job to do in the device, and the minute you take them away from AI, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, second is they're not designed for power efficiency and AI workloads, whereas our NPU is specifically designed for that. So I think this is just a tremendous change that is happening, and, yeah. and our objective is to drive intelligent computing everywhere. And so these techniques that I just talked about, the technology that I just talked about, we're going to bring it to all the devices on the edge. This is not just a phone conversation or a PC conversation. It's going to be in XR devices. It's going to be in Wi-Fi access points. It's going to be in industrial devices. And, uh, and we just think it's the beginning of what is, what is possible on the device. So let's pick off one of those. I know low power is where you've dominated in the marketplace in the last 25 years. But you've recently made a big jump, well not recently, but you've made a jump into what Snapdragon could do in a PC. And we've seen the emergence in the last week, the first launch, or the launch of the first AI PCs. So that's clearly a step, an adjacent step, but nonetheless a step for Qualcomm to get more deeply involved in that market. And I think that, it's not a surprise, but can you talk a little bit about how that works with the AI PC world? Sure, sure. So, uh, as I said earlier, we think of the PC as being reborn. Yeah. Something very different is happening with the PC. Um, what Qualcomm brings to the table is a combination of very high performance. We have our custom CPU that delivers performance significantly ahead of our competitors in the, in the PC ecosystem. Uh, we deliver very low battery life uh, and long battery life performance at very low power, which is a tremendous advantage uh, for end users, and you can have a multi-day battery life experience. Your PC battery life may be longer than your phones. And, and so we think that's a massive change that we're going to bring to the device. And, and then third is taking these on-device Gen AI experiences that we just discussed and bringing that to the PC in a power-efficient manner as well. And the combination of those three things, um, I think it's one of the more disruptive things that has happened, maybe the most disruptive things that has happened in the PC in a very long time. And, and we're ha very happy to be a part of it. I think we're just at the beginning of uh, what Qualcomm is going to bring to bear in that market. Uh, we've announced a couple uh, platforms. We're going to expand our platforms. We're going to address main tier, mainstream PC tiers. And, and we're going to bring the advantages that I just talked about to each one of those tiers. Mm. So uh, it's just the beginning. There's work to do. But uh, we're excited about what's in front of us. And that technology that you're delivering around AI, which I, I, I happen to agree with you, I think it's a, it's a technology that we've never seen quite as the speed of before, even in a high technology market like we are, the speed of AI adoption and the transformational elements of it is going to make a huge difference to so many parts of what our industry does. How does connectivity fit into that kind of hybrid of connectivity and compute? Where does that, where do you put it in the, in the list, if you like? Yeah, and I, I think they always go together. For us, connectivity is the foundation of the company, right. and then we've built kind of computing on top of it and AI on top of it. But if you think about either computing or AI, those technologies are very much dependent uh, on, on connectivity. And, and if you take an example of a hybrid AI use case where you can do a portion of the AI activity on the device and a portion of the AI activity on the cloud, depending on what the use case is, uh, you'd have to go from the device to the cloud and come back. Yeah. And the latency needs to be very quick uh, it requires also very strong performance uh, in terms of the bandwidth that's available, and reliability is extremely important as well. And so uh, we really don't think of those as separable. And, and as a result, kind of when you think about the companies who can bring uh, Gen AI to devices, uh, connectivity becomes like a core component of that mm -hmm. experience, and that's something that I think we're well positioned to do. Yeah, I think that, that bringing together of 5G particularly and AI, and perhaps cloud as well, is that kind of recipe which drives the market into other places. And then you talked about some of the markets like automotive and some of those areas. And I know there's, you have big ambitions, of, obviously, in XR and other things. Sure. Um, but which of, those do you, which of those do you think see the most 
uh, potential for with Qualcomm? I, I th I'm sure you're going to say all of them, but, but are there ones that you think, okay, those are a bit closer to the horizon than, than others? Yeah, so maybe um, the way to think about it is in terms of timeline rather than the most potential. It's really where we are at in our journey on each one of those. Uh, phones, obviously, is our base market, and, and those devices are being transformed with AI, and we're at the forefront of that. Um, auto, I would say we've already proven ourselves mm -hmm. in that market. Uh, we have established ourselves as maybe the leader for uh, computing and AI on the device. And, and there's lots of new Gen AI use cases that are going to come into the cockpit, right? China has incredibly vibrant ecosystem uh, of technology companies working on automotive. And they're, I'm sure, eager to take advantage of the AI capabilities we have and drive new use cases uh, into the automotive. So that's, I'd say that's next. Uh, XR, we've already proven ourselves from a technology perspective. But XR may actually be um, the device that changes the most because of okay. Gen AI, because the interface of the device uh, using an AI assistant and being able to do a lot more than you would have been able to do in the past because you were constrained by form factor, you were constrained by size and display, uh, all of that could change because now you can have a conversation with an assistant yeah. and go back to the cloud and do a lot more with it. So I think that is a device that could have a very significant disruption and we, we are in a position to drive that. Um, the next one in the sequence is PC, and then the last one is industrial. Okay. Um, and so I think it depends on the cadence of the industry, how quickly the others are looking to transform the industry, how long it takes to drive new technology adoption in them. And, uh, and, and as, as CFO of the company and CEO of the company, I, I like seeing the, the sequence of new things coming into yeah. it because... It, uh, it allows us to kind of draw a long-term runway for the company in terms of uh, transforming devices at the edge. And in those industries, have you seen any specific use cases that you've seen around that you think, okay, this could be something? We've seen a few in, uh, for example, in broadcast, or we've seen it in uh, ports, or we've seen, you know, there are, there are very specific use cases which you think, oh, okay, we get it now. Have you seen any of those around? Yeah, so I think if you think about automotive, one of the challenges in automotive uh, experience for a consumer is something goes bad in the car and there's a light on your dashboard and you don't really know what it is. Um, and and the, the effort to, one, find out what is going wrong with the car and then to get an appointment and get it fixed is unnecessarily long. So why not take a model, train it on the manual of the car, and make it available as a Gen AI experience to the end user where you could have a conversation with the car about what's wrong, and then the car can offer you uh, where you could go and repair it. Wow. And so it's a very simple use case, technologically not honestly that difficult to do, but it's pretty transformative for a consumer because right. it allows you to um, get over one of the things you don't like about the car, right? That uh, the, the user experience of dealing with a problem in the car is less than, uh, less than satisfactory and this could change it. Absolutely, and I think that some of the industry, industrial applications we're seeing are starting to bring AI alive. But I think the challenge sometimes is we have AI as a technology rather than AI as a solution, but I think what we're starting to see is a, a build in that. That's probably a great place to call it a day, to be honest with you. Some really good vision about what can go forward. So, yeah, Akash, we... please join me in thanking Akash for his time with us today. Thank you, Akash. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, Appreciate you. It. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Thank you very much, Akash. Uh, I think everybody in this room will know who Qualcomm are and what they can do. Um, so that's a great, a great, uh, a great session to talk about.